Manual for Cultural Heritage Disaster Risk Mitigation Examples for Treating Damaged Natural History Specimens and Disaster Reduction Measures This video shows examples of how damaged specimens are treated by experts. We will also introduce disaster reduction measures to minimize damage to the specimens. Natural history specimens exist in large numbers in a variety of forms. They are all valuable materials that can be preserved and utilized by taking appropriate measures when they are damaged. Needless to say, specialized knowledge is required to handle specimens. Natural history specimens are biological tissues, fossils, rocks, minerals, and other materials that have been treated so that they can be stored as samples for long periods of time. Various processing methods are used in accordance to the purpose of the specimen and the characteristics of the specimen itself. For example, there are herbarium specimens and insect specimens produced by drying the materials. Freeze-dried specimens that are frozen and then dried under vacuum, stuffed specimens used for displays and as ornaments, study skins produced for academic purposes, skeletal specimens created for the purpose of studying the bones, and wet specimens that are preserved in liquids. In addition, there are glass-mounted specimens of pollen or cell tissue prepared for microscopic observation, and specimens of seeds, strains, and biological tissue that are frozen and preserved. Natural history specimens vary considerably in size, and a great many number of materials tend to be collected in one location. There are individual and regional differences in organisms of the same species, and a large number of specimens are preserved to show these differences. It is not only rare types or species that are preserved. Now let's look at examples of how natural history specimens are treated. The treatment methods introduced here all require special knowledge. Please consult an expert when treatment is required. This is a mounted specimen of a hazel grouse. It has been soiled with age. It is treated in a similar manner to a specimen covered in sand or dust due to an earthquake, for example. First, take a photograph of the specimen before treatment to create a restoration record. Next, remove the mound. Do not discard mounds or parts that have been removed. Mounts are replaced with new ones in many cases, but they can be cleaned and reused if deemed necessary. Remove dust and dirt on the surface with a duster or brush. If the specimen is stained by soot or greasy dirt, Wipe away the stains with a soft cloth moistened with alcohol or acetone. If feathers or other parts fall off during the process, Place them in a zipper storage bag marked with a specimen number for safekeeping. This is an example of treatment measures involved in preparing a mounted specimen of a black-tailed gull. Although it is not a damaged specimen, it is treated in a similar manner to a specimen that has water damage. First, apply a saturated alum solution to prevent feathers from falling out and keep in a refrigerator for several hours or overnight. Next, apply the saturated alum solution again as necessary, and then remove dirt and stains from the specimen. Specimens that have water damage are cleaned in water. 
Damaged specimens must be handled with care as the skin is fragile and can crack easily. After cleaning the specimen in water, remove the moisture with paper or cloth. Then arrange the shape as the specimen dries. Loosen the feathers when drying the specimen. After the feathers have been fully dried, insert a new form inside the body, arrange the shape and dry the specimen. Later, conduct fumigation before placing the specimen in a storage room or display room. This is a mounted specimen of a golden eagle that was damaged in the Great East Japan earthquake. Since the skin on mounted specimens are dried out, in some cases they are immersed in salt water and softened and then disassembled. However, such elaborate cleaning procedures are not necessary in most cases. This is how dried specimens of shellfish shells were saved after they were damaged by the tsunami following the Great East Japan earthquake. Some of the materials have mold growth. Mold can grow on the surface of shells and paper labels that are stored with the specimens. Since they have been submerged in muddy water, the saved specimens were taken out of the bags and cleaned with brushes. After cleaning, specimens were immersed in sodium hypochlorite for sterilization, and the specimens and labels were dried. After the specimens were dried, they were placed in new zipper storage bags with the old and new labels and placed in a storage room. These are insect specimens that were damaged by the Great East Japan earthquake. Insect specimens are cleaned with alcohol, organic solvents, and detergents while carefully assessing the characteristics of the specimen. In this instant, specimens were cleaned with very diluted hydrogen peroxide solutions and ethanol. After drying, restore the shape of the specimen as possible. If it's difficult to restore the original shape, store the parts separately. Make sure the specimen can be preserved in a stable condition before placing it in an airtight preservation box together with a label. These are herbarium specimens that were kept at a personal residence. Since it was not possible to treat the damaged specimens right away, they were all put in frozen storage for the time being. Later, the specimens were defrosted in batches for treatment. Herbarium specimens are mounted on cardboard or kept in between sheets of newspaper. If the specimen is wet, carefully remove and clean the plant in water. If the specimen is likely to adhere to the newspaper when drying, insert a non-woven fabric or polyethylene net between the sample and the newspaper. Stack cardboard and specimens placed in between sheets of newspaper or blotting paper to dry the specimens. Make sure that warm wind flows through the gaps between the pieces of cardboard. Hot air may be used to dry specimens and inactivate mold. Please make sure to store the information from labels. Restore the specimen to near its original state to complete the treatment. There were also dried specimens of lichens damaged by the disaster. 
These are wet specimens damaged by the Great East Japan earthquake. When wet specimens are damaged and liquid leaks from broken containers, specimens can dry up and be spoiled. Formalin and alcohol solutions are often used to preserve specimens. Since the solutions are all colorless and transparent, it is difficult to tell what they are by sight. When wet specimens are damaged, it is important to take caution and not inhale any gases, as the solution may be harmful to the human body. The specimens were transported and placed in new containers. Lastly, we will look at some disaster reduction methods. When earthquakes occur, natural history specimens may be damaged when they fall. Even rock samples such as minerals and fossils can be damaged when they fall, and specimens and labels can be scattered and lost. Measures to prevent such damage include using tension rods to support specimen shelves and placing specimens in containers that do not break easily even if they do fall. When floods occur, natural history specimens may be destroyed or washed away. Water damage can also be caused by leaking rain or firefighting. Moreover, water damage can lead to mold growth, decay, or insect damage. For smaller specimens, water damage risk can be greatly reduced by placing them in thick zipper storage bags, for example. With regard to natural history specimens, not only the specimens, but also the labels and inventories that contain information about the specimens are important. It would be preferable to store the specimen in the label as a set. Even when specimens are lost in disasters, do not discard labels and inventories. When labels have water damage, they may become blurred and illegible. Choose paper and ink that reduce the risk of water damage. When copying the information on a new label, store it together with the old label. The condition of labels as well as specimens should be regularly checked and maintained. Inventory data should be kept on paper in case there are power outages caused by disasters making electrical appliances unusable. Like other cultural assets, damaged natural history specimens require stabilization processing. Damage such as mold or liquid leakage requires a quick response. In many cases, however, specimens and related academic information can be saved by taking appropriate measures. Consult an expert if you have any questions about these procedures.